Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and in this video I want to share with you my favorite reads of 2022 so far. I was inspired to do this video from Miriam Elizabeth Reads. I will link her channel in the description box below so um, and the video that she made so go check that out and check out her channel. She's fantastic. Um, I am not including rereads in this list. These are the books that I've given five stars to so far this year, and that is a total of 18 books. I've separated them into genre, so let's just dive straight in. I'm going to start with fiction. I have 10 five star fiction books that I've read so far this year. And let's start with The Vanished Days by Susanna Kearsley. I loved this book. That's going to be true of all of these, so. I might say that every time, <laughs> but this one was so good. This is set in Scotland in the late 1700s, mid 1700s. I've forgotten now. Early 1700s. I've forgotten. <laughs> so unlike the other Susanna Kearsley's that I've read, this one takes place in one time period. There's not time slips or time travel or anything like that. Um, and it's this man is telling his story and from the beginning there's a lot of this talk about truth and stuff so you you kind of know right from the beginning that that you maybe need to take what he says with a grain of salt um, but it was so good and the end blew me away the end was fantastic so if you're reading through it and you're thinking you're starting to think maybe this you know this isn't as good as I was thinking it was gonna be push through to the end because it is worth it um, I also gave 10 stars to Lost in 10 stars, <laughs> five stars to Lost in Austin by Emma Campbell Webster. This is a choose your own adventure, uh, a Jane Austen choose your own adventure. And oh my goodness, was this ever fun to play with. She kind of actually did a combination of choose your own adventure and role play because there was these categories and you kept track of accomplishments and failures and you got points for various things and oh my goodness was it ever fun I loved it it was so much fun when blood lies by C.S. Harris this is the newest in her Sebastian St. Cyr series and this is a series that I consistently give four and a half to five stars to and um, it's it's not the quality is not deteriorating at all because this is the newest one and I loved it I love that it was set in Paris this time around. The, uh, the series has been set firmly in England so far. And then I think this is 17 maybe in the series. And so I love that they've gone to Paris, that there was a new environment to explore. Um, we got some conclusion to a um, an ongoing mystery that's been through the entire series. And it was just phenomenal. The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. This was fantastic and I love what I loved most about this was how much accurate historical stuff was in it that I didn't know about. So this takes this one does have dual timelines until part way through the book, maybe three quarters of the way through the book when it catches up and then it continues in the one timeline. So we have World War just before World War II and then a bit of World War II, and then during World War II in the United States. So it start, we've got one in Russia and one in the United States, and it's the story of Russia's first female sniper. And so she trained, and she was a sniper during the war. She had like over 300 kills. She's a fascinating woman. I would actually like to find a nonfiction book about her because she was so interesting. And then she was picked to be part of a delegation that went to the States to visit the White House, to visit Eleanor Roosevelt at the White House. And it was such a great book. Something to Hide by Elizabeth George. This is the newest in the Inspector Lindley Mysteries and again, phenomenal. I loved it so much. This was set in London and um, a woman is murdered, that they are investigating her murder. And there was, um, there was so much it was set in in this African community in um, in London and there was a lot about um, female genital mutilation which was hard to read about but made a really compelling story. 
London Bridge is Falling Down by Christopher Fowler. This was his latest and quite possibly the last in um, the Peculiar Crimes Unit series, which made me so sad, but if it is the last one, it was a beautiful send off to the series. I love this series so much. It is quirky and funny and really well written. Um, the main characters are Bryant and May, and they are senior detectives, as in Arthur Bryant is in his 80s, and John May is in his late 70s, um, and so nobody asks too many questions about why they're still allowed to be part of this unit, but they are. And uh, uh, I just, I just loved it. I, it was, it was a great, it was a great book, and if it is the last in the series, it was perfect. The Winter Ghosts by Kate Moss. This was an unexpected five-star read for me. I had never read anything by Kate Moss before, and now I am totally going to pick up more books by her. This one um, is set in France just before or just after World War I. Just after, I think. And I loved it. It was a bit of a ghost story, but it was mostly a story about grief, and it was just beautiful. I really, really liked that one. The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. I don't know why it took me so long to read that book. It was phenomenal. I loved it. It's set in England in the 1300s? Ele no, 1100s. And it's about the building of a cathedral, which sounds boring, but it's not. The characters that he's created and their stories, it was just really good. Psycho by the Sea by Lynn Truss. This is the fourth in her Constable Twitten series, which is historical mystery set in Brighton in the 50s. And I loved it. I loved it. This one felt like this one wrapped up a lot too of kind of some ongoing storylines, which makes me wonder if maybe this is the last one too, but I hope not. I hope we get more from Constable Twitten because I love this series. It's quirky and uh, funny and clever and witty and uh yeah i love it the marlowe murder club by robert thurgood robert thurgood writes the death in paradise books he was also the creator of the death in paradise tv show and uh the marlowe murder club takes place in england and the main character is judith and she's 77 years old she sets crosswords for a newspaper the times i think and she hears the murder of her next door neighbor and then kind of gets involved in solving it. She uh, pairs up with a vicar's wife and then another woman, and I forget what she does for a living. She's an artist, maybe? But uh, boy, did I love that mystery. Um, I want to reread it already. Okay, I've got a couple classics on this list of favorite reads so far. Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. I took a long time to read this book, possibly two months, uh, which is good because it was really long. It was like 800 pages or seven or 800 pages, but I really did enjoy it. This is the first in his Palliser series and it was just great. I love Anthony Trollope. I love the way that he writes. I love the way that he addresses the reader and draws you in so that you feel part of the story. I love that. I love his humor. Uh, it was just so good. And then the other cl classic is The Constable of the Tower by William Harrison Ainsworth. This is a guy who has gotten c completely forgotten. I think, um, you know, he was a contemporary of Charles Dickens. And at the time, his books were more popular than Charles Dickens were. He writes historical romances, which is probably why he's not as um, popular now. Historical romances, they're not romance books. They're, um, they're historical romance in the sense that they take place historically from when he wrote them, um, and they're melodramatic, uh, which I'm all over. I love that. And so The Constable of the Tower, it takes place, it starts when King Henry VIII dies and his son Edward gains the throne, but it's really the story of the Seymour brothers and their fight for power, and it was great. Some non-fiction favorites of the year. Georgette Hare's Regency World by Jennifer Kloster. This one was fantastic. I loved learning all the stuff about the Regency era. Clothes and etiquette and how people traveled. And what I loved too is that she, she made connections 
to Georgia Hare's Regency novels, her Regency romances. And so when she's talking about, for example, about etiquette, um, specific etiquette situations, she would, she would um, tell you like a situation that happened in one of the books that connects to it. Um, or dress or whatever and so she was constantly referring to to Georgia Hare's books and I thought that was that was a really fun fun format for the book. The Genius of Jane Austen by Paula Byrne. This was um, a literary criticism that looked at Jane Austen and the theater and actually how much her writing was inspired by plays um, and playwrights of the time. Celebrating Pride and Prejudice by Susanna Fullerton. This was a celebration um, for the 200 year anniversary of Pride and Prejudice and it was really good. I really liked that one too. The Invention of a Murder by Judith Flanders. She looks at the Victorians and how their response to true crime kind of invented this genre of the murder mystery and it was really interesting. It was really good. She included so many true crime stories of the time period. It was fascinating. And then I've got a couple um, children's fiction um, that, that were five stars so I had to include them on favorites of the year so far. One is The Guinea Pig Pride and Prejudice by Alex Goodwin. I talked about this a lot during Jane Austen July. This book was so cute. It was so adorable. He took real guinea pigs, they sewed costumes to fit them and then he photographed them and then in the book you've got a photograph, a quote from the book underneath it and then on the other page, it's a board book, um, he like gave a extremely brief synopsis of Pride and Prejudice but it was the most adorable thing that I've ever seen. It was so cute. And then finally, A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond. I've always loved Paddington Bear, but I've never actually read Paddington Bear. And this was just, again, it was just adorable and so funny. He wrote this in the 50s and I loved it. It was, it was great. And so if I find more Paddington, you know, at the library or whatever, I would totally pick it up. So there you have it. Those are my favorites so far of 2022. I've had 18 five-star reads. I'm curious to know what's gonna happen in the last, you know, not quite half of the year. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these books. And I would also love to know what is a favorite book of yours so far this year. And I will see you in another video soon. Bye.